Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Ross Reviews. Today we've got the infamous 2002 T3 TE50. And with its all Aussie Windsor Stroker V8 and the Tickford Supercar style body kit, there really is no mistaking one of these. And with only around 200 ever made, they're incredibly rare too. Ford Falcon was launched back in 1998 and was part of the sixth generation of Falcons. Upon release of that car, people really did not get behind it. With its very unique front end styling, this has always been considered the ugly duckling of the Falcon family. It wasn't until 2002 Tickford got the AU look right with this car. Now, I've personally Never really liked the look of the AU, but as soon as I laid eyes on this car, I was instantly in love. There really is something special about this car when you look at it with Tickford's Supercar V8 inspired body kit. It just changes the AU and just makes it look so, so good in my personal opinion. I love these headlights on this car. You know, they just seem to stand out and look very unique and where on the regular AU, they just don't work. But for some reason, with this front bumper they've done, you know, they've added the aggressive Azuru 18 inch wheels, the massive ridiculous rear wing, uh, it just all works somehow. And I applaud them for how they got this to look so, so good. Now, just at the back of the TE50, like we said, the massive rear spoiler, this has got to be one of the biggest spoilers I've seen on any factory Aussie car. And you can really see where they've gotten their inspiration from the V8 supercars. This is just very, very cool to see. Come down, you've got your TE50 badge. You've also got your Tickford badge on the opposite side. Now, even down on the bottom bumper here, they've given it this unique body kit again. You know, you almost have sort of a painted diffuser look down here. And then of course you've got your Exhaust, this is actually an aftermarket exhaust from factory. These tips would have been almost square shaped, so they were very noticeable. Uh, but like I said, this is aftermarket, so take a listen. <laughs> Now just coming down to the wheels, these are 18 inch Azura wheels. I love the multi-spoke design, just looks really good on this car. One thing I will wish this had though was 19 inch at least rather than 18s, but I think for the time period this was probably pretty common. Now behind the wheel, this also got a good upgrade with Brembo brakes all round. This was a factory upgrade you could get, so it was pretty pricey costing over 5 grand and back in 2002 that was a lot of money. Now on the side skirt, you'll notice a TE50 badge. Now this was actually meant to name the car, but for the previous generations. So there was a Series 1 and a Series 2 before this T3. And what this was meant to represent was Tickford Experience 5.0. Now this was obviously used to have a 5.0 engine. This now has a 5.6 stroked out V8. So the name is actually kind of wrong for this car, but I guess they just left it as it was just so people didn't get too confused. Now just lifting up the bonnet, you'll find this epic Windsor Stroker V8. This is a 5.6 liter naturally aspirated V8. 
This thing came out with 340 horsepower, around 369 pound foot of torque. This will do zero to 100 in 5.9 seconds. It's a five speed manual, it's rear wheel drive, and there is no traction control. This, this is just an awesome old school V8, and this is just epic. Now the Windsor V8 had been around for quite some time and was normally a 5.0 liter engine. And that's exactly what the previous models of this car received. So the T1 and T2 models received the normal five liter Windsor. But to compete with HSV's LS, it just wasn't enough grunt. So what the Aussies do? Well, they cracked down, engineered, designed, and stroked out this motor to 5.6 liters and created this Stroker Windsor V8. And that is just so cool to see the Aussies fully engineer something, give it as much potential as it could. And I love to see that. All right, so stepping inside this T3 TE50, and you will notice straight away that it's blue. So the seats have this sort of blue leather insert on them. Uh, you know, they've even got a Tickford logo in the middle there. Uh, and to be honest, they're not that supportive. And they do, they are quite slippery as well with this leather. So ideally you would have liked to have had a little bit more bolstering in a car like this. Uh, you know, you've got a Momo shifter here, Momo steering wheel, these were all from factory. Uh, you know, you've even got some blue aspects in here. So it was quite out there, this interior as well. Uh, anyways, and you know, you come down, it is just so basic in here, you know, think of an AU and it's basically what you see in here, you know, it's just super basic console, really super basic radio, climate controls, vents. Uh, now there was a TS50 and a TL50. So now the TS50 was meant to be sort of the little bit better one uh, just for trim wise. So it had a slightly different dash than this and just had a few more features. But I think that's sort of like all Fords I get in. They're always very basic inside, but it's not until when you go for the drive, you really see these cars shine. The door sides as well, you know, blue, that trend of the blue continues, it is everywhere. Uh, you do have a little Tickford badge on the door and it's on every door. So, I mean, I guess that's a nice attention to detail. Funny thing about this car is though, for the window switches, if you want to put the window down, you actually push the window up. So like on the button, you would push the, the top of the button that would normally make the window go up. That actually is reversed and it makes the window go down for whatever reason. I guess because we're in Australia and everything's backwards. <laughs> I don't know. Now in the rear, like any good Falcon, plenty of room back there. And you know, it's decently fitted out, sort of the same as the front. You've got that blue and black contrast leather. And all in all, very basic. Let's get this Windsor Stroker V8 out on the road and see how good this car actually is. All right, now driving this T3 TE50. <laughs> this is unreal. Um, you know, this thing really does give me that vision of like an old school supercar V8 or something. You know, I, I love the body kit on this. Uh, I think this whole car just looks really, really cool. First thing I'm noticing driving this car is got to be the steering. It just feels so smooth. The steering is just very, pretty direct as well. You know, this is a large car and I gotta say, it turns very nicely. It's a, it's a satisfying, it is a satisfying uh, hook in. I will say the wheel is a little bit light, but again, this, the, the steering feel just feels really responsive. It actually does feel quite nice. Far superior than my V8. Uh, that, that's a noticeable improvement straight away. Next thing I'm noticing though is that the gear shifter is a little bit too far forward. Uh, you do really got to reach out for this. And um, though it's not impossible, you know, it, it is not probably in the ideal placement that I would want it in. But God, this, this car is just, and it's just so smooth, the power. Um, 
It really is. Wow, the shifts are pretty good too. You know, feel nice, it's direct, you know exactly where you are. <laughs> She's got some grunt too, I'll tell you that. Now let's get into the five questions, shall we? Now, sound, well, this does have an aftermarket exhaust, like I mentioned. Uh, it is a little bit quiet inside, but from the outside, it does have a pretty nice meaty sound to it. You know, it could be a little bit louder, but I think it's sort of at that nice sweet spot where it's not overly obnoxious loud, which I kind of like, but I think for most people, this is probably where you'd want your exhaust to be at. So let's have a listen to this. Woo! Oh yeah, when you get up on the RPM, she sounds bloody good. Practicality, well, you know, this being a large four-door sedan, you know, if you want a people move, it's pretty good for that. You know, it's got a big boot, you know, you can fit lots of stuff in this car. Uh, the one thing that's very interesting about this car, though, which I noticed while reading the owner's manual, is that you are not allowed to tow anything in this car. So it actually has, and states specifically out in the mo in the owner's manual, sorry, you are not to tow anything. No trailers. There's a zero tow rating for this car, which just seems ridiculous, um, considering how well you know Falcons tow generally. Um, yep, this one is not meant to tow anything, which <laughs> is just a funny thing. Now obviously for your fuel consumption and everything, I've been told by the owner it's actually not that bad if you drive it like a grandma, which is pretty much the same for most of the V8s I review. They're usually actually pretty good as long as you don't wring its neck out all the time. But if you're going to drive it how it should be, you know, your, the fuel bill shouldn't even be in your mind. price well brand new back in 2002 this thing would have ran you 57 grand and you know I think that fits in pretty well with all the other competitors at the time uh, if you had have jumped to the TS 50 then it would have jumped significantly you know around 8,000 more I believe uh, and again that just got you you know minor stuff upgraded dash etc now if you're gonna pick one of these up on the used market this is a pretty tricky situation. I've seen on car sales ones listed for as high as $60,000, but the owner told me, and from what I saw online, the average price for these at the moment is probably somewhere around the thirty dollars to $40,000 mark. Uh, but then again, you know, good luck if you're gonna find one because they only made 202 of these and Four of those were prototypes so these are extremely rare and I think when I looked on car sales the other day I believe I only found maybe three or four on there now handling well for a large car I got to say this thing weighs in over 1700 kg and this thing handles bloody well you know the, the, the turning and the steering is just so connective it does really feel very nice going into a corner you know the gearbox shifts really well clutch is not that hard to use seating position well you are a little bit high like most sports but I don't have a problem with it the only thing I'll complain about is that the seats are not supportive enough so you do kind of slide around in them but the car itself when you go around these corners it holds its own quite well now these cars didn't receive any traction control from factory and I actually heard a story that somebody returned one of these to Tickford after only owning it for about 
three or four hours because the car actually kicked out on him that many times. He just didn't want to drive it anymore. Now, I don't know how true that story is, but I can confirm with you this thing, uh, yeah, it will kick out. And especially in first and second gear because first gear does have a very short ratio. All right, now zero to 100 impressions. Let's just pull over here. Um, now this thing is claimed at a 5.9 seconds, so let's just see how good we can get. Put this into first, preload it a bit, and woo, bit squirrely, 100. <laughs> wow, that was actually really impressive. I was actually surprised how quick that actually got up there. Um, I would actually believe that's damn close to 5.9 seconds. Just flip it down into second here, hug the corner. Wow. <laughs> Wow, yeah, you gotta be careful with your right foot, you know, no traction control. You can really feel this thing um, wanna be very close to spinning. Now again, I am kind of disappointed with the interior. Uh, you know, it's not overly sporty in my eyes and um, or overly nice looking at all, but you know, it's when you get in these cars and you go for a drive, you really see what makes them special because they just are so connective and you just can't not smile when you drive one of these cars. You just really cannot. It's quite fun to compare this car and my VA Ute because, you know, my Ute came out just after this, this car and uh, they do look very different from the front. So obviously Ford went, we have to get rid of this front end because they were not selling many at all. And um, I think they did improve it, to be honest. If I'm gonna say on a general aspect, I really love the look of this car, but the average AU Falcons just, yeah, they don't do it for me. But the BA, you know, the BF, the FG, really, really good looking, you know, cars, utes. Uh, I absolutely love that design. All right, everyone, I'm gonna finish the video off here today. Huge thank you goes out to the owner for allowing me to take his pride and joy out. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, I also have to say a massive thank you to one of the subscribers. You know who you are, mate, and thank you so much for organizing this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. This is an incredibly rare car. It's the first time I've even seen one and I get to drive it, so I am absolutely over the moon. So I hope you guys enjoyed this too. If so, please remember to hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you're new here, and we'll see you on that next video. Oh,